Hello there. This is Daniel from Three River Farmers Alliance. I'm here with, with Monet Cassier from Sober Sisters Recovery. Well, it's great to have you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, Daniel. Very nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. We've talked, um, you of course, via email before, but this is the first time we've ever met face to face, I guess you would say. So um, yeah, well, introduce yourself and describe uh, describe your role at your organization. Thank you. So my name is Monet Cassier. I am the executive director and co-founder of Sober Sisters Recovery. We are a nonprofit 501c3 uh, level three sober home for women suffering from substance use disorder and uh, trauma and or co-occurring um, disorders. And my role is executive director slash do everything you can all at once person, right. <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so a big old farmhouse, Mally Farm out in Summersworth that um, I obtained from the city. It is a city owned building. I have a 20 year lease. And, it was uninhabitable when we got it. It had been a boy's home for 30 years. So it really needed a lot of work. So uh, for five months, we refurbished and we opened up July of 2016. But for about a year prior, we, we had to um, put in an RFP with the city to obtain the building uh, and then refurbished and opened up. And uh, we've serviced right around 92 women in the, since the time we've opened. That's amazing. I definitely can relate to the wearing a lot of hats. You know, um, one thing I think is it can be kind of chaotic, but also can be really re rewarding to be working at a, a you know a smaller organization or a you know kind of an ind you know I would call it an independent company. If, you know where where I work and and uh, yeah, there's just so many things that we all do. Um, sometimes they even let you, you know interview people and do a podcast, I guess, if you ask, if you ask nicely enough. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, I mean, as I was explaining to you, you know, my, my purpose in, in doing this was just that I have met so many, you know, wonderful and passionate and knowledgeable and engaged people at Three River Farmers Alliance um, and Veggie Go. And then as, you know, my role grew, I started to work with other people from the community. Um, you know, and I was just really, I don't know, I guess I was, I was moved by, by your, your mission. And I, I think that it, it seems like such a, a wonderful organization. So, um, yeah, I suppose, um, could you describe specifically, uh, your, your mission statement and, and kind of how, how you operate? Sure. I'll read you my mission statement. All right. <laughs> so Silver Sisters Recovery at Mallee Farm is sober structured living committed to promoting the wellness, safety, and dignity of women who seek recovery from substance use disorders. And what we do here at Mallee Farm, we are more on the holistic side. So uh, we are not MAT, which is medicated assisted. Uh, we promote healthy eating, exercise, lots of water, good night's sleep, uh, there's a woman who has moved in straight from treatment and is having trouble sleeping. We will um, go to the health food store and get some magnesium or melatonin. Uh, we have a perpetual Sober Sisters Recovery salad um, made, obviously, with vegetables uh, from the Three Rivers Alliance. So I don't want to get ahead of the questions, but I just... We are holistic. So we have Reiki. Uh, the women have one-on-one -on -one Reiki treatments. Um, we have uh, yoga and Pilates. We are located on over 100 acres of trails. So the women will hike. Uh, so it's very quiet. It's a space for women to heal from the deep root cause of why they mask their feelings with substances. So we really... Um, sort of a dying breed. We have, uh, I say that only because um, there are, there is not another model quite like this in the state. Um, I do four single bedrooms only. And uh, for that, the reason is so that women can heal. Uh, I did start off the first year with six or seven women uh, and it 
became quite chaotic because when a moment when a woman moves into Mally Farm, Silver Sisters Recovery, they not only put down um, the substances, they'll get a physical, dental, you know, mammogram, pap smear. They will do telehealth once a week. Um, you know, we do budgeting on Fridays. So it's all encompassing. So we decided to do four high quality uh, care beds. That's, I mean, that sounds honestly like a wonderful approach and, and incredibly unique. And, and it honestly probably shouldn't be as, as uncommon as it is. You know, I think that that sounds, it just makes so much sense. You know, obviously you have a, a medical focus and, and mm -hmm. but yeah, there's so, that seems like a really wonderful way to, to explore that, you know, and your location and just everything about how you approach it. Yeah, I find to be really refreshing. And just the little bit that I know about it, I was so, I was so impressed. And I just, I, I, yeah, well, I just had to know more. And I, I I'm thank you know, again, thank you for, for, for joining me. Um, so I, I suppose uh, my next question would be, how did you, how did you get here? How did, how did you, did you end up to, to be doing this? Uh, Sober Sisters Recovery? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm in long-term recovery myself uh, for coming up on 14 years. And, you know, I struggled. I had a tough go of it. Um, and I got clean and sober in February of 2008. That's awesome. Uh, yep. And uh, so, you know, the way I got sober is a little bit different than, than, you know, we, what we offer for the women, but how I envisioned this place as I closed my eyes and I thought, you know, what would have helped me? You know, what would have, what would have made it not so hard? Uh, and I've implemented that here. So what got me here was because I'm in recovery and I wanted to service women. I ran, um, you know, I'm into health and fitness. Uh, I was much, I was definitely into health and fitness uh, to open the nonprofit. I ran a couple of half marathons for the seed money. And prior to that, I had done uh, like seven halves um, to raise money for other causes uh, in the, for the same uh, mission of substance use disorder um, and, and uh, men, mental illness. You know, I want to just back up a bit and say that uh, we do accept medication, antidepressants, certain meds that uh, assist uh, with that part of the healing process. It is monitored, but I just I just wanted to make sure I said that. Um, but no narcotics or mind altering substances. So uh, what brought me and then, you know, we lost I lost a friend to a heroin overdose and um, another friend and a uh, friend in the community the recovery community asked me, you know, Hey, what do you think of opening a home for women? And I didn't pause and say, let me think about it, Daniel. <laughs> I didn't pause brother. Uh, I just said, yes. You know, she asked the right person because I am type A and I'm high energy. So next thing you know, I was training for another half marathon because I didn't know what else to do to raise money. And, and the next I ran the Maui half and the, um, great bay half and raised eight grand and you know put it in the bank and so the journey began and um there's no looking back right that that's a great that's a great story i think that that's i just can't compliment you enough on that that i i think that that's you know just having i, I suppose having the vision to you know of course you know the hard experience of, that you've had anyway just you know in in your recovery and then to, to turn around and and i think a, a lot of people don't don't think to to use that experience to help others you know and not just to help others but to have this to envision an entirely unique experience um yeah i just think is is really impressive it's my passion i i did work uh i was a office manager a law firm i was a paralegal for years and uh, then i started my own business in early recovery a, a cleaning property managing business which i loved i loved it it was just great working for myself on my own and, and then when we started to gut valley farm i knew that i couldn't uh 
you know, run that business the way I was. So I do. So our mission, I'll also tell you, uh, the only way we could run with having four women, and sometimes it goes down to two and one, it just depends on, uh, you know, who's really all in wants to be clean and sober and recreate their life. We don't um, undermine our mission or deviate from our mission. So uh, what I decided was to let go of several clients of my other job, but everyone that works here are either alumni uh, that have been through here four or five years ago, their support staff, um, and they all work, other, they work another job that really pays their bills. So nobody, you know, this, this supplements our income. It, it's not our, our living, it's our passion. Right. It's a, a labor of love. I definitely, yes. yeah, as a person who has, you know, I was, I was telling you a little bit before we started that I have played music for, you know, my whole life and I still do, you know, but yeah, it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't always, it has its, its, its ups and its downs, but it sure doesn't always uh, pay the bills, you know, but you do it because you love it. And to put yourself, you know, into such a selfless sort of, you know, service position, in what would otherwise be, you know, your leisure time is really commendable. I think that that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, well, I, I suppose this kind of leads right up to my next question, which is uh, what is your, your all time favorite experience with, with your organization? Something that really stands out to you. Sober sisters. Yeah. Oh, I keep thinking of, of the three rivers farmers Alliance, like my favorite experience. Oh, with no. Well, obviously oh. your favorite experience is talking to me. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Or those string beans that are washed that I still need to cut and freeze the rest. Right. Um, so my favorite experience. Oh, there's, well, probably my favorite is the memories. Like, so for each woman that has lived here, each resident that has found this to be their home for part of their journey, there's always uh, silliness, right? even in the, the guttural, painful parts, there's silliness. I mean, it's a group of women and we are, I mean, obviously I'm professional and I run the place, but we are fourth graders sometimes <laughs> right. you know, fun. at best. And so my, my favorite is, is the silliness. It really is because, you know, getting clean and sober we're, we, we're supposed to enjoy life and, we start to, when I see a woman start to enjoy life, you know, they beg to be here, they want to be here, and then they get here and they get comfortable, and then they start to get kind of cranky and like, oh, like, like it's my fault, right? Everything's my fault, <laughs> you know? But when we start to get silly and it's light, um, our other favorite times are in the dining room. We are all foodies. Not one woman that has come through here hasn't been a foodie. You know, so talking about food, eating, praying, you know, um, cleaning up together uh, and seeing the the glow and the light come on in a woman as time goes on and she starts to heal and she reunites with her family. And then right in the smack dab middle of it, I, I wonder, OK, I see that the pipes blew behind the wall, the waste pipes last fall, and then all of a sudden. I get a donation, a private donation that I have to mention that because the, uh, I just am blown away by the universe. Just make sure that this building gets by each month. And so those are my favorite moments. You know, we, we got, we got hit with this horrible thing last fall. And then clients of mine from my cleaning property managing business just called me over one day and I'm like, Oh, what's going on? You know? And they handed me an envelope and they didn't even know about the plumbing. So those are some of my favorite moments when I see the community or, uh, you know, others support the mission. It, it just blows my mind. Yeah, that, that's really, that's yeah. amazing. And, and, you know, I, that's something that really, you know, I was really impressed with when I started working with Three River Farmers Alliance was, you know, probably, um, well, you wouldn't exactly call it a, a product per se, but you know, one of the things that you can add to your cart when you're shopping on on Veggie Go is you can add a donation to you know the food insecure essentially, and that's part of how we provide people with with donations. You know, or we uh, people who are on SNAP, you know, we can give them food, and part of how we pay for it is with the money that our own customers donate. 
And mm -hmm. if you were to call donations a product, that would be the number one product on our website. The thing, the, 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 the thing that we most, you know, the, the thing we make the, or, or handle the most money from is donations, you know? So more than anyone spending money on the food, we're, or, you know, handling these donations from our, you know, our, our customers who are incredibly generous. And it's just such a wonderful thing to see, you know, when, when I, when I first, you know, started working for them and could kind of peer into all of it, I was just so, you know, I, I guess impressed or, or humbled, or I, I don't know what I, I am just, it's such a wonderful thing, you know, ha having those donations and, and just the kindness and, and goodwill of others, you know, it can really, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just awesome. I weep. I weep. Yeah. When it happens, I weep. I do. It's big. <laughs> yeah. I just like, oh yeah. You know, uh, we, we got a donation. So we were able to go up to camp. You know, the women got to kayak and canoe and we did two trips to camp this summer. So um, I think that those are my highlights, you know, and the generator is a huge highlight <laughs> that makes for a great winter. Right. So, That's great. Yeah. So, well, I know you're uh you're a little short on time, but while I still have you here, um, I guess I'll just, you know, to, to, uh, to describe the, the way that our, our companies wor work together, you know, what exactly or, or how does Three River Farmers Alliance contribute to, to what you do? In, in an amazing way, more than you probably could imagine, because when a woman is newly clean and sober, um, well, a man or a woman, anyone needs vitamins and fresh organic produce, vegetables, fruits and vegetables. Uh, and it's just amazing what happens because I, I never stop washing, cutting, cooking. Uh, so not to move around so much. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, okay. uh, it just, so their focus, the, the, our women focus better. I watch it take place. They move in, they go from all this processed food or maybe institution food where they were at to a beautiful salad, uh, some, you know, freshly grilled uh, organic chicken breasts um, and some sweet potatoes. Like I have some sweet potatoes coming tomorrow. <laughs> so um, it definitely helps with sleep, uh, their focus, their skin, their complexion, just everything changes slowly but surely. Also being able to show a woman how to wash, you know, peel apples and make an apple pie. Uh, this past summer, the blueberries, we've frozen, washed and, and froze a lot of blueberries. So we have smoothies for the winter. We made blueberry pie of when a woman, it was a, a, one of the residents' mom's birthday. And, you know, they start to work and they're saving their money and they don't have a lot of money. And so they're able to make an apple pie or a blueberry pie for their mom for their birthday. And, and you know, they never even think, you know, if you don't know this, or I've never thought that way. And then you make the pie with these ingredients and you bring it as a gift, it's love. And then you share that pie together. And so that's what you guys are giving to us. It's, you wouldn't even believe it, just knowing that um, I get to take some of the stocks from this summer and make soup this winter. Uh, I could just go on and on. Uh, I mean, that's, I mean, you're going to make, you're going to make me cry. That's, I know. <laughs> well, you know, for, you know, and from, from our, our position too, you know, where, you know, we have this operation and we sell food and we're in all the things that go along with it. You know, we got to fix people's, uh, you know, expired credit cards or, or, you know, make sure we're delivering on time and all these things, you know, that that's our, our job really. Um, so from my perspective, one way to view do donations is just that we don't want to waste food, you know, and we're so thankful. We're like, oh, great. We found a home for this food, you know, and, and that makes us so happy, um, even just operationally, you know, like that's just, well, that's part of our job, you know, it's, it's we're, we're, we're here to, to improve the, the food system and wasting food is, is not part of that, you know, <laughs> so yeah, yeah let's so donate it anyway. But then to hear specifically about, you know, how, how the effects, I mean, that, that is very, you know, it's, it's invigorating, you know, it's, it's going to, uh, I know we that don't waste. So to just, you know, we do not waste. So I have alumni, so I'm getting 40 pounds of, 
uh, sweet potatoes tomorrow. Now I know that's going to be a bit much, but that's the smallest amount you offered. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I'll be doing all kinds of stuff with it, but I have alumni that live nearby that, you know, are still, they finished here, but they're still new in recovery and, and, and new in their apartment. And I call them and they'll come over and get maybe four or five potatoes for their dinner. So it, it has a trickle effect, but it, it uh, I don't waste. So I'm constantly, um, freezing the kale, uh, making kale chips, uh, just, but it's a lot of, it, it is a lot of work, but I show the women that it's so worth it because we're, you know, they can save money on their budget because we do budgeting. So they know when they come home that, uh, I always announce what we're getting. So we get excited. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, it's, it's awesome to hear about and yeah, it just makes I mean, I, I can't wait for, you know, De Deirdre, who is, um, you know, our community experience uh, supervisor, and she does so much great work. So I, anyway, I, I want to say thank you, Deirdre, for for being such a big part of, of you know, our company. Um, you know, she's she's going to love hearing this stuff, you know, because sometimes, yeah, it is. It just is a job in and of itself to 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 make sure that this this food gets to where it needs to go and that we're, you know, we're not wasting, et cetera. So it really is wonderful for, for us, you know, to, to hear about it. And I'm so happy that we can be, you know, be, be helping others. And, and the, the work you do is, is just incredibly impressive. Um, I guess I will, I will close by asking you, um, what do you, do you have any specific goals for, for the future, for your, for Sober Sisters or what's, uh, what's the next steps? Steady as she goes. Yeah. You know, I, I've been approached to open one in Concord, New Hampshire, and then on Kauai, because I do uh, live part time on the South Shore of Kauai. Oh, and wow. yeah, and just keep it simple, just the way it is, servicing four women at a time, giving them quality care. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to change something that isn't broken. We might add you know, we might add some different services or some different events, but right now it's working. And I, um, not, I'm not looking to self-care. If I were to be really straightforward with you right now at five and a half years, I'm, I'm coming up for air. And, um, I promised that I was going to take care of myself. So yeah, that's important. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little more self-care and just kind of you know? Yeah. I mean, just, it sounds like if anyone, if anyone deserves it, it sounds like you deserve it. <laughs> yeah. So a little more self-care and just keep things the way they are steady as she goes and consistency, because, you know, there is a lot to say. There's a, something I printed. I don't know what I did with it, but it has to do with substance use disorder and regimen and, you know, making it through the pandemic. I, we never closed. I stayed open. So I, I live in Rollinsford, but I moved in here full time. And um, so we stayed open. And so it's time to just come up for air and we're gonna stay open. We're gonna continue uh, because with the treatment centers, um, if one gets COVID, it spreads. So I have to be right. on high alert. Do you know, about, it's yeah. just been, it's been really tricky. So it, especially having these, this, these, this produce delivered to our doorstep, that's a whole nother topic we could talk about. You know, it's just, this is a great partnership. It's a win-win. And how I met you guys was I saw your truck somewhere and I knocked on the side of the truck. <laughs> and the guy awesome. driving the truck just said, hi. And I said, hi. And I said, who are you? And what do you do? <laughs> and I handed him my info card, my, my rack card. And, the, and then I got a phone call from Deirdre. And so that's the universe taking care of this building. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're just honored and happy to be able to, to help and, and, and be involved. And, you know, like I, like I, I may have said before, I have just been so just, you know, I've been so impressed and, and it's been so exciting to learn what, you know, all these things I've learned about, about farming and about these wonderful, um, you know, local farms and these, and these, uh, you know, and, and these charitable organizations and all the, all these things have just been really, it's been a very enriching experience. And yeah, I just, I want to do as much as I can to, to highlight it. And 
and yeah so thank you for for joining me i know you're busy and um i really appreciate thank it. thank you daniel okay it was great to uh it was great to meet you same here thank you so much thank you for all you guys do for us we are so grateful